That's where we begin tonight, the very terrible story about the death of Kate Spade. The sister of the celebrated fashion designer says that she may have taken her own life because of a struggle with mental illness. Spade was found dead yesterday in her New York apartment by her housekeeper. Her sister said in an email to CBS this morning that she believed that Spade suffered from bipolar disorder. She wrote this, it finally took, her, took its toll on her, a very tragic and sad ending to the life of a very colorful and delightful being. Kate Spade's aspirational but affordable designs influenced popular culture. Vogue editor-in-chief Anna Wintour said there was a moment when you couldn't walk a block in New York without seeing one of her bags, which were just like her, colorful and unpretentious. And UN ambassador Nikki Haley said Spade's death is a stark reminder that we never know the struggles of a person regardless of their outward persona. Jerika Duncan is outside a Kate Spade store in New York. Jerika, good morning. Good morning. The motto for Spade's fashion line is live colorfully. But beneath the glamorous exterior, police tell CBS this morning that Spade was wrestling with financial and family issues. Police say a housekeeper found Kate Spade hanging from a red scarf tied to a doorknob in her bedroom. Her husband Andy was home at the time. The designer left a suicide note addressed to her 13-year-old daughter, telling her it was not her fault. The contents of that note, as well as uh, the physical state of the apartment and the comments of the witness lend to the credibility that it is an apparent suicide. Her family said in a statement, we are all devastated and we loved Kate dearly and will miss her terribly. Spade's older sister, Rita Sappho, suspects the designer may have suffered from bipolar disorder. Sappho tells CBS this morning she tried numerous times to get her help. I think women do want something that's interesting. The 55-year-old became a fashion industry darling in the 90s with a simple but whimsical style. Some color, some texture, some prints. I don't know, I think something a little more interesting, but also elegant. She and her husband Andy built a fashion empire around her signature handbags, counting celebrities like Ellie Kemper among her clientele. She puts forth a sort of aspirational line, which I think, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be chic and pulled together and a New York lady, and then I can. Spade stepped away from the limelight after selling her company in 2007, but she recently mounted a comeback. I personally, I don't know about Andy, took off a good nine years raising my daughter and absolutely adored every moment of it. Police say she may have taken her own life because of money and marital problems. She and Andy, they were a team. I mean, they were adorable together. New York Fashion Week creator Fern Malice, who knew Spade for nearly three decades, says she was shocked by her death. I just went, what? The last person on earth, you would think, would take her life. Spade's brother-in-law, actor David Spade, tweeted out this picture that said at his book signing uh, that I love this pic of her, so pretty. It's a rough world out there, people. Now, obviously, uh, Kate Spade's death has brought a lot of attention uh, to mental health and awareness. If you do need help, you can go to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's 1-800-273-8255. Nora. Mm. All right, Jerika, thank you. You know, the reaction to this yes. is a reminder that suicide rates are going up. Mm -hmm. And I looked into the, the number of suicides now twice that of homicides. I saw a lot of women online saying the best thing I ever did was get treated for depression and anxiety. It probably saved my life. So there is another secondary conversation going on, yeah. as well as the shock of what happened about how to get treatment. And it's so important. I keep thinking about her little daughter. You know, I, I met, Kate, I can't say I know Kate Spade, but I met her several times and she was always so bright and so sparkly and it just shows you that you never really know what's going on. And I'm hoping that in some way, as horrible that this is, that it will, Nora, open the conversation for people to say you can and you should get help. I keep thinking the despair she must have felt that she had to think that this was the only option that right. she had is so upsetting to me. And also those of us who are friends with people we think might be trying to keep a, a brave face, yeah, how yeah. we then approach them. In other words, it's not the person who's hurting that needs to reach out, but we need to find yeah. a way in. Well said. Well said.